This is a General Motors HEI, or High Energy Ignition System. Um, GM came out with this in 1975. There are many, many applications of General Motors vehicles where it was used. It's really a great ignition system. It, a lot of people consider it a one-wire system in that it's the entire ignition system in one. Uh, one wire powers it, and you have got an ignition system, which is great. Um, one thing that I, I want to talk about a little bit in this video um, is one component, which is a critical component, and it, it can fail, although luckily it's been very dependable, and that's the pickup coil. Pickup coil is, is right in here. The pickup coil has just two wires going to it. Um, the coil, actually, it's a coil of wire and a magnet. And any time you uh, put a coil of wire through a magnetic field, you'll induce a current into that coil. And that current is used actually as a trigger to the control unit, which is uh, in the unit. I, I don't have it in there right now, but the control unit fits in there. And that's what uh, the control unit uses that signal to determine when to fire a uh, spark plug. Um, again, it's a very dependable unit, but it can fail, and I want to demonstrate uh, actually three tests that you can do to see if that uh, pickup coil is functioning or not. The first test is just a simple ohm test of the resistance of the pickup coil. Um, the specification for the resistance of that coil uh, typically would be between 500 and 1500 ohms. Um, but I, I would definitely recommend that you check a service manual to make sure for the one you're working on. But typically between 500 and 1500. Um, so I've already got the, uh, my ohm meter set up. I've got a couple of test leads on the, uh, the connector for the pickup coil, just two wires um, coming to my uh, voltmeter uh, uh, test leads. And if we turn the VVOM digital volt ohm meter on to ohms, it's reading 0.987 K ohms. Well, one K is a thousand. So what this meter is reading, it's 0.987 of a thousand, which would equal 987 ohms. If the specification is between 500 and 1500, um, then we're right about the middle. You know, right about a thousand ohms would be in the, the middle of the range. So this one tests out good. Something I'd recommend, um, this is a Mighty Vac. I've got this Mighty Vac, or it's a little hand vacuum pump attached to the vacuum advance unit of the distributor. Um, and you figure this vacuum advance unit pulls that pickup coil to change the uh, spark timing uh, uh, as it relates to engine load. And you figure over the years and the miles, hundreds of thousands of times, this wire flexes back and forth um, as the uh, pickup coil moves. So not a bad idea that when you do a test like this, you also add a wiggle test. And a wiggle test really is just basically moving the wires and looking at the ohm meter um, to see if you see any changes. And so this really is what happens as the uh, engine's actually running. If I, I pump up the vacuum, I think you'll see the pickup coil moves. If I bleed out the vacuum, it moves back. So you figure it's, it's constantly doing that in relation to the load on the engine. So, you know, hook up a Mighty Vac if you have one. That also, it's not only is it, it testing the vacuum advance unit, which is this guy, and you're checking it for leaks, but also um, at the same time, you can make sure that the uh, pickup coil that's sitting on the bushing that supports it is actually able to move but then also, as it moves, uh, you're not uh, uh, just uh, showing up a, uh, an intermittent break in the wire. So, in which case, uh, we look good. I might have changed my connection here a little bit, but you know, normally you would see uh, something might go all the way up to OL if it suddenly opened up. But this one looks good. So that's the wiggle test. Another test that we can do on this distributor and the pickup coil uh, would be an AC voltage test. And 
it, this actually, this pickup coil actually puts out uh, an AC sine wave when it's operating. And we can, if we use our digital volt ohmmeter, we'll put it onto volts, it defaults to DC. We want AC. So we'll change it to AC volts. If we just turn the distributor shaft, we actually start to energize the pickup coil because it is a pulse generator. It's its own generator. So as I turn the shaft, like right now, we're putting out, well, varies, but right around oh, as high as 1.2 volts, depending on the speed as I turn it. Um, the faster I turn it, the higher the voltage is going to go. I see as high as 1.8 right there. So what we're actually seeing is the uh, alternating current voltage that the pickup coil is producing. If this pickup coil had an open in it, um, we wouldn't be seeing that voltage. So we can check the resistance of the pickup coil. Again, somewhere between 500 and 1500 ohms. We can actually see the AC voltage um, uh, on our DVOM. And if we have a, uh, a digital oscilloscope, we can also see the sine wave it produces. And that'll be the last test that we do. This is a Zoi two-channel oscilloscope. The price of these have really come down. Um, this one I paid uh, right about $70 uh, when I bought it recently. Um, and it's, it's the kind of tool, there are a lot of things in the automotive world that you'll find this useful, but you've got to educate yourself. Um, and there's a lot of uh, YouTube information. There's a lot of information on how to use this. Um, and, but it's, again, it's the kind of tool that the more you use it, uh, the more applications you find for it. Uh, but one of them, uh, which is great, is actually just seeing what that sine wave looks like when we uh, spin the distributor shaft on this. If I can do that so it doesn't hit my wires. So this is a typical signal for a, a pulse generator on a distributor pickup coil. Um, also, a very similar signal, um, you could use this on a, a wheel speed sensor on an ABS car, the ones that use uh, pulse generators. Uh, the new cars typically are using Hall Effect devices, which are square waves, so they're a little bit different. But for the uh, anything that's a pulse generator, um, you will create an AC sine wave, very similar to this. I've got the scope on hold right now, so I was actually able to freeze the sine wave. So this is the uh, typical waveform that you would see on a uh, uh, distributor pulse generator. So uh, again, this is the kind of tool that the more you use it, the better you get. Um, and uh, you'll, I think you'll find a lot of applications for it. But I just wanted to show you the, the three basic methods of checking a distributor coil using a resistance check, checking for AC voltage uh, with your uh, DVOM. And also if you have one, uh, looking at the sine wave that it actually creates. Uh, so I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.